Well, good Thursday afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick little add-on for the bike today. I ordered uh, Viking bags, uh, swing arm bag for the Rebel. Um, it's smaller than I anticipated. My hands aren't real big, but that's, you know, handprint. Uh, when I get it mounted up on the bike, I'll throw something in there to give you a size reference, but that's not very wide, you know. Width of my fist, again, I don't have real big hands. Uh, so, I don't know what you're gonna be able to put in there. A few little things, you know, wallet, gloves, maybe a flat kit, something like that, who knows. So let's see what uh, Viking Bags includes here. It's all Velcro, it's kinda nice. Got a storm flap here, looks like. Okay, so we've got straps inside, and I'm having trouble seeing in that black bag. It's black, black in there with no contrast. Uh, yeah, okay, and it looks like it's got a little pouch here. So, I can't tell if that's more weather resistant than the rest of it, but... Construction looks pretty good. No, that's not waterproof. It's uh, water resistant. You can see it's rubberized on the inside there, but... Okay, anyway. So you can put your keys or wallet or phone or something in that. Uh, made in Pakistan, okay? The zipper seems to be pretty high quality. So, no instructions. I'm just kind of presuming. Okay, so it looks like these two straps are gonna be here, just under the seat, if you guys can see that. So it looks like that strap's going there, this strap's going here, and I am not sure where this strap's gonna go. Let's wrap it around the chain, shall we? <laughs> not. Hmm. It's not rocket science, but I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. I have to say, this is the first time I've ever fitted one of these. Uh, I had uh, luggage on my Harley Sportsters, but it was uh, not tied to the frame or the swing arm like this. So this is new territory for me. Seems to me that's gonna have to be further back, maybe under the seat here, right there, I don't know. It's all trial and error at this point. Thought it would just be real easy to throw this thing on, but not the case. If you don't know what you're doing like me, I can't tell if that's where it should sit. That's too far this way, that doesn't seem right. Nah, I'm missing some air somehow. I'm gonna figure this out. So I'll shove these in my uh, new uh, Viking bags, uh, swing arm bag that I put on here. Uh, I'll do a review on that later. Uh, I like the bag, don't like the straps. Uh, the placement of the straps is really goofy and uh, I don't think it's really designed for this bike, so it's probably not, uh, not their fault, it's just uh, not designed for this. I th think it was made for the Rebel 300 and 500 because the slots that they've got cut on the back of it are turned the wrong direction. Uh, the one in the front is nowhere near front enough and it kind of flippy floppies around a little more than I want it to. But for the short term here, that's uh, the only storage solution I've got on the bike, except for wearing a backpack. And I think you guys all know what I think about backpacks. Okay, so while I'm doing my uh, rear rack, I uh, figured in the sake of storage or name of storage, I'm going to uh, try to revisit my Viking bags uh, issue that I started a couple of months ago and I just haven't had time to finish it up. A little bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing. Uh, the bag I don't believe was developed for the Rebel 1100. It was probably made more for the 500, 300, 500 series because these slots are cut in the wrong positions and directions to fit uh, the Rebel 1100's frame correctly. And the biggest issue with it is the buckles that are inside this thing are huge. They're absolutely massive. Uh, when you tighten these things up, you got these big chunky buckles. They're sitting right in the middle of your space, and this is already a very narrow uh, bag. It's only, you know, what, maybe three inches wide, and these buckles are sticking out an inch and a half into the middle, so you, you can't really get anything down in there. So the straps have got to go. Uh, they're just not going to work out. So I'm going to pull those out of there. Uh, I'll illustrate the problem here quickly. Uh, for this thing to sit in the correct location, uh, you tie up one of these straps, and you can probably, I don't know if you can see from your angle, but from my angle, this strap needs to be cut this direction to go over this rail. It needs to go this direction, not this direction. So it's cut facing the wrong way. Uh, then 
a similar situation with this one down here. Uh, it's cut in the wrong spot. Uh, it needs to be a little more further forward because when I strap this thing down, the whole bag does this. It flop, flop, flops, and there's no way to uh, secure it properly. So what I'm going to do, I'll mark the positions where I think it needs to be with a Sharpie, and then I'll punch some holes or cut slots in it uh, for zip ties and uh, get rid of these big, ugly straps and the buckles that go with it, which are really the problem. Okay, let's give this thing a, a measure here, shall we? I'm sure these are, measurements are available on the website for the product. Uh, so at the back, you've got almost nine inches deep there. Sorry, you guys probably are not at the correct angle, but almost nine inches deep at the back. At the front, you're looking at barely five inches. And then front to back, it is about just shy of 10 inches. So let's say nine and three quarter inches there. So it's pretty small. Uh, and with those giant buckles being in there, chewing up space right in the middle, it uh, makes that space even more precious and doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is uh, kind of mark where I think this thing should be. Uh, we're definitely gonna be putting another slot or holes up here in this section. Uh, and these are gonna be turned sideways or I may just end up elongating one of these and putting another slot here for the uh, zip tie to go this way instead of this way. And then uh, the existing slots or holes I'm gonna cover up with uh, Gorilla Tape, good stuff. Okay, so this is what I've come up with so far. Uh, I'll take you over there to the bike and show you in a second, but what I wanna do is I wanna get it up as high as possible uh, away from the chain, obviously, because the chain is gonna be riding kind of right in this area. And there's not really anywhere to strap this part right here because you know, traditional triangle bags are used on uh, rigid frame choppers, that sort of thing. So you can tie it down to the, you know, what would be the swing arm, the, the rear trellis area. Well, obviously with a movable swing arm like that, you can't because it's bouncing up and down. So anyway, I'll see if I can make it work. I'd like to make it work. The further forward it is, the less it works because it's right where your knee needs to go down the back of your leg. Uh, so it's gotta be as far back as possible and kind of tucked up as far as possible. So when it's in this position, right here, that keeps it up kind of sort of away from the chain. Let's see if I can get you guys in there. You can see how close it is to the chain right there. It's touching the chain guard. So I don't know, the chain guard might kind of keep it out of trouble. Let's see, if it gets chewed, it gets chewed. I'll just take it off. Okay, that's the plan. Put some holes in it, see how it works. Okay. So if I elongate this hole at the top, just a hair, wrong way. Try to keep you guys on camera. Just allow that zip tie to slip through there, and then it's going to be parallel down this far. How thick is the frame rail? Uh, it's going to be almost two inches. Okay, so let's say inch and three quarter. One and three quarter down from that hole. So that's where I drill the second hole. This is a, like an ABS plastic backing on this thing, so. Okay, and then good luck on this one. Uh, I think keeping it up high is gonna be the best. I marked where my frame rail is here, so I'm gonna go just a hair backward from the seam here because I don't want to go drilling into the innards of the bag but I want it to be as far forward as possible because that was the problem with it being floppy okay and we're going to go inch and three quarter down so right there hmm, I would have gone higher up but that's okay so looking at about the same thickness let's go in and board a little bit from that <laughs> Somebody's got a squeaky bike horn, that's funny. Okay, so there's my two strap holes. If this works out, you guys can kind of approximate what I've done here. It's not science, it's uh, trial and error, good luck. Uh, and whatever holes I put in this, if they don't work out, I'm just going to cover them up with uh, Gorilla Tape to waterproof it somewhat. Okay, so let's go. Let's take the seat off first. Hey, I want, there we go. 
<laughs> so he's got that squeaky horn. Man, I want to put one of those on the cub. That would be hilarious. Okay, so let's get this through there. I think I can get it through there. No, we want to go over this. That's what we want to do. That'll keep it located more rearward because there's a pin right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Frame rail support something. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like part of the inner fender support. Okay, so. Get the contortionism going on here. And three things at once. Holding the bag, feeding through, and going down through the frame. Okay. Got the first one started. I just want to start it so it doesn't come undone. I'll leave it loose until I can get the other one positioned. Okay, and let's get that down around that frame rail and back into the lower hole. And then reach inside and grab it. Okay. Okay. Got that one set. All right. So now, what I'm going to do is just crank it up. And if I don't have it in the right position, I have to cut it loose and try it again. Because there's really not much maneuvering at this point other than just getting it tight. So let's get that one set somewhat. Let's get this one set somewhat. Crank the you-know-what out of it. Yeah, I think that's going to work. And it's, oh yeah, look at that. It's pinched in. It's resting against the chain guard, which is okay. It's kind of resting against the edge of the shock, so that's going to keep it from moving around too much. The shock is going to be going this way under compression, so not into the bag, but away from the bag, so that's good. What do you think, everybody? Be nice now. Be nice with those comments. I'm doing this for you guys. So that's kind of the, the sitting position there. If you guys can see it. the angle's okay. So that's that. Let's put the uh, seat back on, see what the finished product looks like. Uh, it's really secure now. Uh, with the uh, hole positions that I use there, it's up right against the edge of the seat. It's kind of pinched in by the edge of the shock here. Uh, under compression, the shock is gonna go this way, not into the bag, so that's good. Uh, and the front of it is secured all the way up against the edge of the, the frame up here. So it's not floppy flopping around like it was before, which was just horrible. Uh, I will eventually probably pull this off when I finally get my uh, saddlebags, but uh, I think that'll be good. I mean, still not super happy about the uh, position of it. It's right into the back of my leg when I go to put my leg down. So, you know, right here, I mean, as long as I'm not walking the bike forward, it's okay. Uh, you know, I come off of it here, there's plenty of clearance when my foot's up on the peg, but as I put my foot down, it's right in the back of my knee. So, not ideal positioning, but with uh, limited storage and, you know, as few options as we have right now for uh, carrying gear on the, the Rebel, I think that's a worthwhile compromise. Anyway, that's that. I'm done for today. Uh, just going to clean this up and uh, uh, Viking swing arm bag. I wouldn't give it uh, necessarily thumbs down, but let's say thumbs up for the construction and uh, half for the fitment. Catch y'all later.